Your how was shy away, come to take the throne. To conquer world powers, bring Jake the home. I'm quarterbacking like Jake DeLone. Like Mount Rushmore, I got a face of stone. All right, first and foremost, I want to say, call Hello, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And what I want to go into today is basically, it's a term called reverse engineering, right? Go ahead and get this definition. I already wrote it down on there. You just got to just read it. Reverse engineering, also called back engineering, is the process by which a man-made object is dis, uh, deconstructed to reveal its designs, architecture, or to extract knowledge from the object. To do what? Extract knowledge from the object. Extract uh, uh, knowledge from the object. That's it on there, right? So basically, reverse engineering, man. What's up, bro? You trying to hear the word of God real quick? Hey, we gotta talk to him. Oh, we gotta talk to him? Oh, yeah, I that's forgot. Oh, yeah, that's old buddy, man. He know, he know man. Back to what I was talking about, right? Reverse engineering. That's like basically the way people use it now. Like they'll have a, a like a, like they'll say a video game, right? If somebody wants to make hacks, they'll take the, the the source code they got and then put it into binary to see how the code's actually constructed to make hacks. So we can do that same thing to get knowledge on end time prophecy or eschatology. And what I want to go into is basically proving who Esau is. That's right. Because. The, it's the, 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 the scriptures are clear on who's going to be ruling at the end time. And it's the Edomites. That's right. So let's just see something real fast. You give me... Yeah, go ahead and get that. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the what? The end of the world. Yeah. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, right? So he says Esau is the end of the world. This is written in Greek. There's three definitions for world in Greek. You got cosmos. Which is mean a after harmonious arrangement. You got aeon, which is talking about an age, or you have uh, oikumene, which is talking about the inhabited earth. So let's see which one this is talking about. Let's see which definition that's talking about. You give me, you give me uh, Ecclesiastes one verse four. Because if, if we're gonna go by the world that has in the planet, we know it can't be that because the scripture is talking about the world abiding forever. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 4. One generation, uh, generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The what? The earth abideth forever. The earth abideth forever. So it's always going to be. So it can't literally be Oikomene, the, the inhabited earth, the planet. That's not going to, the Esau is not going to be the end of that. Now you give me, you give me Ecclesiastes 4, verse 16. Bring it Let's out. see if it's talking about cosmos. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse 16. There is no end of all the people. No end of what? No end of all the people. Mm -hmm. Even of all that have been before them, they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. There's no end of all the people. That's pretty much all I wanted. There's no, so, so we know there's three different Greek words for the word world in the, in the, uh, in the Koine Greek, which, was, which the Apocrypha was written in. We don't have lexicons for uh we don't have the lexicons for the apocrypha so you have to do due diligence to figure out what the words are talking about so we already proved that it's not okimene we already proved that it's not cosmos so it has to be literally it has to literally be the age or aeon in greek and we're going to prove it right here get the, read this real quick there's that same verse in the common english bible Time. Is that nine? Go to second ezra chapter six verse nine in the common english bible Esau represents the end of this age. So that's how we know. We got two witnesses. We already, we already, uh, we already uh, did a process of elimination to prove that's talking about literally an age, not uh, like a time period, not a people, or not the earth. Go ahead. And Jacob represents the beginning of the following. The beginning of the following. What's the following? The kingdom. And we're not in that time right now because guess what? We're still under Esau's rulership. So, you got a precept? God, it, it literally says it in verse 7. Go ahead. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Yeah, the what? Way. Of the times? Yeah. Or when shall the end of the first and the big uh, beginning of it that followeth? So, that's proving right there, that's the right. end of times. That's proving that Esau will be what? That the, the Esau will be the end of this age, and we're going to follow right after that. Our kingdom's going to come. Jacob's kingdom is going to come. So what does that mean? That means Esau is going to be the last ruling 
party on last ruling party on earth before uh, before Yahweh comes back and Yahweh's kingdom is established. So we have to look at who's in power right now. Who's in power right now? The so-called white man, so-called white woman. They're the ones right. in power right now. Hey, get, hey, don't touch the camera. Don't, don't touch the camera, dog. Don't touch that camera. Screw you. Yeah, screw you too. Screw man. you, uh, Helen. <laughs> you see that, bro? Karen. Karen. Nobody did anything to her. I hate you. <laughs> that's, that's that I perpetual hate, hatred. You, uh, give me that real quick. Give me that in uh, Ezekiel 35. About that, I think it's verse 4. They always had a perpetual hatred because nobody did anything to her. Right. Nobody did nothing to her. And she wants to come and try to come and try to put her hand and touch our stuff, man. That's ridiculous. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, what? A perpetual hatred, yeah. hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. And they, they, they do that continually to this day. Go ahead. By the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So guess what? We see we see the so-called Edomites. They want to kill us. I bet I bet she could. She would probably put us to death. Right. But you can't right now because you made a law that makes sure you can't do that. Good. Really, the most I got put that spirit upon you so we wouldn't be consumed. Because had we had they not have did that, we'd still be in bondage. And really, they just kill us and just put us out of here, bro. But just so just just so the most I got can raise up people to get this truth out. That's why I put that spirit upon them. That's why a so-called white man in their, in their police force has been fighting for us, man. <laughs> when, when Edomites try to come up against us and we have to defend ourselves, the police have been on our side the last That's few right, times, man. bro. Without us even having to plead our cause. Right. So, <laughs> so if you, like, you can't tell me that's not the most side fighting for us. Because Edomites don't fight for us. Definitely. They had a perpetual hatred against us. That was the <laughs> but the most side, give me, give me, uh, uh, give me that and Daniel. When the Most High rules in the rules in the kingdom of men, I need that real fast. Four seventeen. Four seventeen. Yeah. Then I'm gonna go back to my lesson. Bring it out, huh? Right? Yeah. Teach. This is the book of Daniel, chapter four and verse seventeen. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. So. Ruleth in the kingdom of men. Most high rules in the kingdom of men. He puts the spirit upon these men, just like how you have the four, the four horsemen in uh, in uh, Revelations. The Most High God puts the spirit upon the king, uh, the kingdom of men. He puts the spirit upon them to make laws. It like just like just like our people like eating my say all the time. Like a few years ago, we wouldn't we weren't allowed to do this. The truth couldn't come out at that time. But guess what? Y'all put y'all made laws to where y'all can't touch us like that anymore. You can to a degree, but y'all can't just stop us from from uh, enacting our First Amendment rights. That's right. The most I got put that spirit upon y'all. Y'all think y'all just doing it for y'all think y'all doing it for yourselves, but y'all did it literally. The most I got put that spirit upon you so we could be out here and wake up our people. Because huh. it wouldn't happen any other way. This truth couldn't get out like this if you didn't have if, literally, if you didn't have camps. Because right. <laughs> because guess what? All y'all all y'all stem from a camp. All of us. Yeah, all Israelites stem from a camp. Nobody was teaching this before camps. So how y'all gonna say how y'all say y'all teach a camp doctor? Y'all wouldn't exist. Y'all wouldn't be Israelites if, if camps didn't exist, bro. Uh -huh. And how are camps allowed to exist? The, the most I put the spirit upon Esau to ease up a little bit, so we can take their kingdom down, man. Because he rules in the kingdom of men, and he does what? And giveth whosoever he will, and setteth up over it the uh, basis of men. The basis of men. What's the word? Basis means the lowest. The worst, the worst of the heathen, like it talks about in Ezekiel, and that's the Edomites. Right. So let me go back into my lesson real fast. Give me, uh, were you on something? You give me, you give me, uh, Obadiah, the last verse. Out. I see another parallel scripture proving that Esau is the last remaining kingdom. The book of Obadiah, verse twenty-one, and Savior shall come up on Mount Zion. It's also a cut saying there ain't no other saviors. But what? Read again. And saviors, plural, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. Judge the Mount of Esau, yeah. And the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Shall be Yahweh's. The kingdom shall be Yahweh's, right? Now go ahead and jump to Daniel chapter 7. The kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Give me, uh, I beheld to the throne was cast down. Daniel 7, I think, 
This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. I'm talking about the Most High God, because he's the Ancient of Days, and he said he beheld till the thrones was cast down. That's talking about the four beasts right before it. So those kingdoms was cast down, and the little horn. Go ahead. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now go into where it talks about the saints shall possess the kingdom. That's verse, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom yeah. and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So we know that. So we know two things, right? After the thrones or the kingdoms or the rulerships of the world are cast down, then the saints shall take the kingdom. We just saw in Obadiah uh, verse 21 that Esau is going to be destroyed and then the Most High Kingdom is going to stay. And that's talking about our kingdom. And we saw in uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 that what? That Esau is going to be the end of the world and Jacob is going to be the one that follow it. Proving Esau is going to be the last ruling kingdom. Like we got two precepts. We got two witnesses on it, man. So Esau is going to be the last ruling kingdom. Now let's just keep that in our head. You give me Daniel 7. Well, I'm gonna need you to get some other precepts. You get Daniel seven. You get Daniel seven. God, this is Daniel seven, verse one. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, "I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea." The great sea is going to talk, uh, talking about the nations. Go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's, eagle's wings. That's going into Babylon. Because the, the, what was their symbol? The griffin. Come. Go ahead. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. The wings were, were plucked to, to the destruction of Babylon. Because guess who's guess who seen that? Daniel seen that. That's why I said I beheld till the wings was plucked. Go ahead. And it was lifted up from the earth. And made stand lifted up from the earth because you know when it talks about heaven, you got the skies and you got high places of which was going into rulerships. So it was taken up. Go ahead, read that part again. And it was lifted up from the earth. Mm -hmm. They lost their rulership. And made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. That's the Medio Persian army. Or our kingdom, whatever you want to say, the Medio Persian uh, kingdom, and it raised up on one side because the Persians, the Persians, let this car pass. You guys just have loud cars. It's crazy. Talking about the Persians having more authority and more power and more, and more rulership than the Medes, than the, than the Medes, go ahead. Like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. They had three ribs in between in the, in the teeth of it. That's talking about Babylon, the first one it destroyed, Egypt, another place it took over, and Lydia. Go ahead. And they, said, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Go to war. Go ahead. After this I beheld and lo another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. So this is talking about Greece, because who took over the cap who took over the rulership after the Persians? The Greeks. And read that part again about the four what? Which had upon the back of it four wings as of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. And, and were given to the two the, the four heads, right? Let's see who those four heads are. You can go ahead and get this one real quick. Read the source and then read the main part. Con. The source is the Hellenistic world, the world of Alexander the Great. Um, the Internet Ancient History source book, Hellenistic World, assessed first, de uh, first December 2016. After Alexander's death, his empire was divided among his four generals. What? His empire was divided among his four generals. That's them four wings and them four heads. Go ahead. Known in Latin as the Diadochi. The name... The name by which they are still referenced, from the Greek diadoke, diadoke hoi, meaning successors. Mm -hmm. The first one was who? Uh, Lysim Lysimachus. Lys Lys uh, Lysimachus. 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 I think it's Lysimachus. 
Lysimaeus, who took Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy the first, Seleucius, first of Nicator, and that's it. That's it, man. That's the four king. That's the four kings. The four wings, man. Because it, it, matter, matter of fact, read it again. Kind. This is Daniel seven and verse six. After this, I beheld and lo, another yeah. like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Guess what? Who was over that? Alexander. So go ahead. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. Who took over Greece? Rome. Rome took over Greece. Go ahead. And strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. What do you see out of Rome? You see, you see, uh, it was diverse from all the other places because they had a, they had a, what was it? What's it called? Uh, um, they had the Gulf Senate. You had a Senate. You had a Senate. You had like, and you had basically like how you see Republicans and Democrats. You had the plebeians and uh, Petrucia. Is it yeah. plebeians? The two, the two uh, political parties you had in Rome. It's the same thing. It was the same exact thing, just like how uh, America has. Just like when you see in Revelation, the 13th chapter, it talks about that second beast, which is America, exercising the same power as Rome, or that first beast. I want to get this right. I want to. Patricians and the Patricians and Plebeians. Patricians and Plebeians. Yeah, Patricians and Plebeians. That's that's what it was. Same thing. The Patricians representing the upper class, just like how you got the Republicans, and you got the Plebeians representing the lower class, like how you have the Democrats. It's the same thing. They had a Senate. They had they had they elected people. Yeah, that's what you that's what you get out of Rome. So go ahead. Con. This is verse eight. I considered the horns, and behold, three came up among them, another little horn. Another little horn. And they did what? Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. That's talking about who? America. America is that little horn. What's the three horns? Uh, hey, Reggie, what's the three horns? What's the three horns that it let it plucked up? Wait, you're on the spot. Is that Rome plucked up? Because yeah, yeah, of Rome, uh, out, of, out, of the, out, of, uh, out of Rome came ten horns. Three of them got plucked up to, to become this little horn. What's them three? Because the little horn is America. I'm going to say uh, Europe, like England? No. No? Well, okay, I'll give you England. I'll give you England. England, okay. Britannia, go ahead. Okay. Uh, no. Bring it out, huh? <laughs> Bring it out. It's Britannia, the UK, you got the American Revolution, you got Spain, and you got France. Spain, okay, okay. Because yeah. that's what. That's what that's where you get America, especially when you look at the type of English that we speak in America. It's really an amalgamation of those languages, too. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom were there, whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Mm -hmm. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men, and a mouth speaking great things. Mm -hmm. America is more stout than its fellows. America um, tries to seek trying to seek and say, oh, we're proud Americans, can't nobody stop us. That's really going into them uh, sitting as a widow. I mean, it's not sitting as a widow, sitting as a queen, and then so see no widowhood, man. That's what it's going to, like, uh, uh, was that Revelation 18? Get Revelation 18 real fast. Because it talks about later in this chapter that horn is more stout than its fellows. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. That's America. Because they think, Americans think they're big, but it's like how Rome is. It's like how Rome really was. Rome think that Rome thought they were big bad. America thinks they're big bad. They think just because they got all this through conquering, just like how Rome did, they think that, that nobody can stop them. Go ahead. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen yeah. and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And shall see no sorrow. These Americans think nothing's going to happen to America. People, people... People, like, I'll ask people that question right now, and they'll still be like, well, yeah, we're just going to get through this. There's going to be all, all this. The economy is going to bounce back. Bro, look at, look at this, man. Like, <laughs> the, uh, uh, Americans are so proud. And when anything, when anything happens to Americans, they're all scared because they, they, all, their, all their eggs are in one basket, and that's the nation. That's the nation of America. It's existing as a whole, man. So as soon as they see America kind of crumbling, that's why they crumble. Because all their pride and all their faith is in this nation, even the Christians. So, who knows what 
the DC in Washington DC stands for? District of Columbia. District of what? Columbia. Who is the Statue of Liberty modeled after? The goddess Columbia. So the her, America is represented by what? Columbia. That's where all the government is in there, the District of Columbia. That's that whore. That's that whore you see in Revelations. Exactly. I forgot all about that too. <laughs> Go ahead and go back to Dan Daniel. Daniel. What's up? And, uh, and uh, the Statue of Liberty, uh, it's also a uh, uh, figure of uh, Libertas, the Roman, yeah, the yeah. Roman Liberty God. Right. Exercises all the power of the first beast, man. Why does America, if America is not Babylon, why does it has, why, why, why does America do exactly the same things that Rome does? Because he talks about it talks about Babylon in the book of Revelations. It talks about this beast being just like the first beast. And the first beast is the same beast that's talked about in Daniel chapter 7, which is Rome. And Christians even have the same breakdown. So how do y'all get to where it's, it's, it's Rome and then it's just something else? It's just something else, man. Well, when yeah. America does the same exact thing. Really, because y'all don't y'all want America to last forever. That's why. Man. That's right. Unless you color your doc color what the uh, the true doctrine is. That's why I had to tell that pastor, y'all have to, st I asked him to break down Isaiah 60, uh, the 61st uh, chapter. Why is it talking about some people getting the gospel and some people ain't getting the gospel? He said, well, you got to look to what Christ said. You got to go to what Paul says. No, no, man, you can't use what you think the New Testament says to color your breakdowns on what this says right here. The Bible is cohesive. We can't just negate what Isaiah said or really any of the prophets. We can't do that. And that's what they do. Because modern Christianity wants you to say, God bless America. That's really going into the image of the beast. They want you to say, God bless America. Con, this is Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Yeah. And the ancient of days did sit. Yeah. So he beheld till the thrones were cast down. Going into that, uh, we said before, uh, all these beasts, all these kingdoms was cast down. Whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. And his wheels is burning fire. Yeah. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Yeah. Thousands, thousand thousands ministered unto him. Yeah. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw they would lose their they would lose their dominion and rulership, but they wouldn't be completely destroyed as a nation. Go ahead. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven He's talking about Christ and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him that's going into into Yahweh Shai because guess what when you go to uh, Ezekiel the 30 the 37 chapter and many more it talks about that prince that prince, that prince, and it also calls him David, but David's been dead, so it's talking about somebody from the Davidic line. That's, right. that's talking about Christ, just like how Matthew one verse one says, Yahweh Shai, uh, the son of the son of Abraham, the son of David, showing you he's he follows that that same uh, paternal line all the way through them. Go ahead. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So that's going into. The kingdom is going to Jacob. This is after this is after Second uh, Ezra chapter six verse nine. That and that age is already ended. Esau's rulership is already ended. So wait a minute. Who was the last ruling person at this time? You had the ten horns that come from Rome. Who's the Romans right now? The the, the so-called white man. Right. And that little horn, that little horn that uh, came up out of them came from who? Rome. So either way. Either way, the last ruling power would be uh, uh, somebody from Rome or the revised Roman Empire, uh, or somebody who comes from that. So who does that? Who? So who's Esau then? It has to be the people of Rome. And who are the people of Rome? The so-called white man. So the so-called white man has to be the Edomites. That's right. Keep going. Con, this is verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came nearer to one of them that stood by, and asked him the truth of all this. Mm -hmm. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. Yeah. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Mm -hmm. Going into Babylon, the uh, Persian Mede, Persian, uh, uh, Persian, the Medio Persian uh, kingdom. You got Greece, and you got Rome, and you got the ten horns that come out of Rome, which is going into NATO and the EU, the common markets pretty much. And then you got 
the, the little horn that came out of the three, which is France and uh, France, Britannia, or the UK, whatever you want to call it, and uh, Spain. Go ahead. Uh, it says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So, after all those thrones are cast down out of the kings and the ten horns and the little horn, the saints shall take the kingdom. That means that last person right there are the Edomites. Who is the last person right there? The uh, Rome, that last, that fourth beast, and the ten horns and the little horn. That's all. The, that's all people coming out of Rome. So whoever is the Romans, who are the who are the literal Romans at that time, have to be the Edomites. So the so-called white man has to be Esau. That's right. <laughs> Unless somebody else is just gonna come out of nowhere and just take take over the Edomites, man. Come on, bro. Russia, Putin said he had weapons right now that nobody can shoot down or destroy. So, so if he has that, nobody's stopping him. Nobody's stopping him. As, 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 I mean, yeah, nobody's stopping him. What are you going to do? He's got nukes and missiles, and, and he got boats. What you got? Jeremiah 59. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations yep. from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of mighty expert men. None shall return in vain. None shall what? Return in vain. They're not going to be shot down. He's going to gather those nations against them. Go to Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. Bring it out. Watch this. Because this is really a cut showing you it's not the papacy. Because the Christians that come out with the breakdown of the ten horns, it's talking about the, the ten tribes that come out of Rome or whatever, and, the, and out, of the, out of three of them came the papacy. So let's see this real fast. The book of Revelation chapter 17 and verse 16. Yep. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. That's the whore or the little horn or America. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Burn her with what? Fire. That's what it's talking about in Jeremiah. It's talking about the ten horns, the, the, uh, what's left of the ten horns destroying the whore. That's the nations coming up against Babylon the Great or America. So if that's the papacy, what are those ten, what are those ten people, those ten men, who are going to come and destroy the Pope? Where are they at? Show me that. You can't do it because that don't make no sense, man. How right. <laughs> don't make no damn sense? Your breakdowns are stupid. The only reason Christians are allowed to do this because you don't, you, because <laughs> nobody checks y'all. Nobody really. I saw the, I saw the Hebrew Israelites, nobody really tried to check that doctrine. They just say, okay, I don't know any better, so simple believe with every word. That's all that happens, bro. And we're going to double, it's going to double down on that in, in Daniel chapter 7. Go back to Daniel chapter 7 real fast. This is Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Nobody ruled this planet like Rome did, man. Nobody. Nobody was ruled. Rome was just coming in. Rome, see, Julius Caesar will pull up on your nation, the flex his power by building a bridge, take the bridge down, and, and just sat there, and people surrendered to him. It's like, dang, man, he could just do that? He could just do, he could just have men build a structure within weeks or whatever and, and, and we're supposed to fight against them no we, the people just surrendered to julius caesar he didn't, he had to fight he fought a lot of battles but some of them people just outright surrendered to this man bro no 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 other nation that had that same power same power or authority man except rome go ahead and of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. That's America. His look was more stout, stout than his fellows, man. What you got? Going back to how Caesar had that power, he could flex. Can America flex like that? And going to what the brother just said, Revelations chapter 13 oh, yeah. and verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And that's that other beast, that's America. Go ahead. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That's going into his political political system, which is really the governmental power of America. You got your Democrats and Republicans. 
and he exercises all the power of the first beast. It's like how Rome had the same exact thing. Go ahead. Before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Deadly wound was healed. That's going into the crisis of the middle of the uh, the late Middle Ages, when you have religious uprisings. You had the Black Plague happening. Like the e the Edomites or or the Europeans at that time was getting just dismantled, bro. You had uprisings, you had plagues, pestilences, wars. The Edomites, would, Edomites really wasn't about to make it out of that, really. <laughs> and then they got, what, the Renaissance. They came back into power. All that stuff ceased, and they started They started ruling the earth again. Go ahead. So that's the devil wound that was healed. Verse 13, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. How did America do that? Reggie, how did America do that? Missiles, this was, uh, namely the nukes. It's like how they dropped on Japan. Nobody wasn't, like, man, when America dropped the, the nukes on Japan, everybody shut their mouths, bro. That, that's, that really ended the war. It was like, nah, nah, if you're doing that, you got it, bro. That's like you see. That's like you see Debo uppercut, uppercut red. <laughs> you remember that on Friday? He uppercut it red. He said, "You want some? You want some of this, old man?" No. no. <laughs> that's how everybody else was. Why are you, why are you messing with these people? <laughs> yeah. that, that ended the war. America flexed their power by making fire rain down from heaven. Is more on that? Verse 14, and deceive it them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. So that's when white supremacy took off, man. Because it was already in America, but once America finally got exalted as that nation you can't mess with, that golden city, then then white supremacy just took off, bro. It just took off, man. Because <laughs> that's what America perpetuates. That's that image. White white Americanism, Christianity. Uh, we're, we can't nobody stop us. We're the we're the top guys in America. Talking like that, a that, that's that that's that image. Because you look at that word in the Greek, it's icon. That's going into a moral resemblance. You got either the picture of something or you have a, a moral resemblance, and that's how we know it's uh, talking about a moral resemblance. Because because I'm actually reading like, that part again. Uh -huh. Uh, Salak saying oh, to wait, wait. we know it's a moral uh, resemblance because the only uh, not the only other place but another place where this word is used is Romans chapter uh, eight verse was that twenty nine talking about the elect being conformed to the image of the son that doesn't mean everybody's gonna look like Yahweh Shai no, you got you got some Negro only saying that er, now everybody's gonna look like Yahweh Shai that's um, that's amazing no, and the man, same the same try, people the same people who said that don't look like Yahweh Shai you don't look like you don't look like what we read in Revelation, the first chapter, about Yahweh Shai. Like, <laughs> none. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be no, no women in the kingdom. Oh, God. That's oh, no. stupid, bro. Man. It's stupid, bro. <laughs> it's stupid. That's a great point. That should have been brought up in a debate. That's a great point. They say no women in the kingdom? They say because if, 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 if the elect is going to look like, yeah, it's going to look like Yahweh Shai, <laughs> that, um, the women don't look like Yahweh Yahu Shai look like a woman? Well, I guess they said Afro women. Come on, bro. Because <laughs> it says the image of the sun. Oh, the so that's sun. a masculine. Oh. That's a masculine thing. So they ain't gonna. According to them, there's gonna be no women in the kingdom. God. So we know that's not a literal like picture. I was talking about a moral resemblance. So the, the moral resemblance of America. So that's when America got got that power. That's when America got exalted when they dropped the missiles, bro. That's right. <laughs> that's why I say more stop than their fellows. That's why everybody said they're proud to be an American. You know, at least I know I can rob and rape from people and get it to land, bro. That's that's why they do that. Now at least I know I can drop missiles on the people and irradiate them, which and then turn around and then turn around and say you people can't do that anymore. And then try to stop other nations from having nuclear weapons. Now y'all can have now y'all can continue to make nuclear weapons, but unless y'all go unless y'all uh, are in line with America, y'all can't have them. America's the biggest hypocrite ever, bro. That's right. <laughs> it just it's like you'll do you'll do something and then make a law against it. It's like everything is supposed to be okay. So read that part again. Daniel 7, verse 20. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and read that part again, that horn did what? Verse 21. 
I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. That same horn that made war with the saints. Guess what? Because three, because y'all turn around and say, what, what is she talking about? The dollar. Hell. There you go. Yeah, okay. Well, there. The dollar says, let's see if that uh, benefits you. <laughs> but read that again. Let me get that. Let me get Come on, that. Verse 21. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints. That same horn, that little horn, because the Christians will say that's the papacy. That's that first pope. Made war with the saints. Yeah. Of the most high. It's a lot. And prevailed against them. Yeah. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. So did that happen already? Because that first pope is dead. <laughs> Your breakdowns don't make no sense. It don't make no sense, bro. That same horn is going to make war with the saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. What place on earth is making war with the saints? America, bro. That's right. Perpetually. Go ahead. Huh. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom. Wait, wait, read that part again. Tell him what. Verse 22. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So that's past the end of time. So that means that little horn is going to be Edom. That little horn is going to be Edom because that, that same horn is going to make war with the saints until what? Until Yahawashai comes back. Until the Most High God or the Ancient of the Days sends his only begotten son. Come on. Verse 22. Salat. Verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And that's what America does. That's what they perpetuate. They change times and laws with part of their image, which is Christianity. The laws are done away with. Everybody's a saint. Monogamy, <laughs> exactly. Change times and laws. Oh, the Sabbath on Sunday. It's, just, it's ridiculous. It's world war. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the whole of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Has that happened yet? No. Because that's talking about Jacob's kingdom, Israel's kingdom, and rulership. But that horn has to die first. And Esau is supposed to be the last ruling power. It says in Obadiah, the, 20, uh, the 21st verse, the Savior shall come up and judge the Mount of Esau. And then right after that, Jacob's kingdom is going to be established. So what does that mean? Esau is that last horn. Esau is the last ruling power. Nobody can take down the white man right now. Nobody. No nation can take down the so-called white man right now. How is it? Matter of fact, if Esau is the Arabs, how are they going to take down the? How are they going to take down Esau? How are they going to do that? Out Saudi Arabia, what well, well, the other places? How are they going to take down Esau, bro? How is that going to happen when they are subjection to the white man? You know, they say they break down this. The Arabs behind the scene pulling the strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Approve it. First of all, how are you privy of that information? <laughs> That's two things. The, the, I want the second one answered first. How are you privy of their, their running things in the backgrounds? I would love that. And the second one, prove it, bro. Just prove it. God, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations carg must trouble me. And my cognitations is talking about his dreams. That's pretty much it on that. That's just proving the last horn must be the Edomites because we have two witnesses we have second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 we got Obadiah chapter uh, not chapter 1 verse 21 proving that Esau is supposed to be the last ruling power the last ruling power part according to prophecy in Daniel is the little horn or the revised Roman Empire which goes into America and we have extra biblical sources yeah we have extra biblical sources <laughs> the Roman Empire the Empire of the Edomites I would like people to look at this book <laughs> written by Edomite. Written by Edomite. Oh, you got. Oh, yeah. Get that on camera. I'm slacking. Car, car, car. You saw it. There you go. 
There we go. You see it? So that's the thing. That's why I went into reverse engineering at the very beginning of this. Because you look at you look at the end, end product of something to see to to, uh, to see the original parts of how it got that way. That's what you do with coding. It's like a video game. You decode it, put it, bring it all the way back to binary to the zeros and ones and figure out how the source code works. If we want to see the source code or the originators or the key players in this, we go look at the end of the prophecy and go backward. Just to prove who Esau is, to prove who the saints are, to prove who, what nations are. That's how you do things, man. That's how you get the answers. We don't have to go into DNA. We don't have to go into, well, uh, they migrated here. We just have to look at the ends of the prophecy. And no, uh, no other person is going to take over the, the Europeans, man. Nobody's taking them over. The Arabs aren't taking them over. The Hamnites damn sure ain't taking over the Edomites. <laughs> or the, the Europeans, however you want to say it. Shout out to them brothers in South Africa, though. Yeah, that, that too. Shout out to them brothers, man. But yeah, man, with that, I want to say, call all Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, and say Shalom. Shalom. Kari. We are the children of the one Yahweh. The chosen. Ye are the chosen of the one Yahweh. And he has given his laws to us. Now everything belongs to us. Shalom, what's going on? It's your brother, Chief Priest Alazar Wanoya, a.k.a. the Gorilla Hebrew. And I'm just letting y'all know, I just dropped my official clothing line, Urban Gorilla. Go to UrbanGorilla.com right now to check us out, man, and pick something up. There's U-R-B-N-G-R-L-A.com. We got all kind of items for men, women, children, even infants, as well as fragrance oil, smell goods. You can also check out Hebrew is a Light Clothing Co., another Sakari business on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, you can hit up DeaconSakari.com to get your plug on the scars, the music, and the children's Bibles. Thanks for your time. All praise to the Most High. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom.